Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and today's video is going to be about basic thermostat wiring for a furnace and air conditioning. So here's my thermostat on the wall. I have the power switch off at the furnace. Let's go ahead and pull it off the base here. Set that down. So here we have the base. We have the wires coming out the wall and going into my thermostat. And so we can have a better look at this, how the wiring works. I'm going to go ahead and just pull this base off the wall as well. Disconnect all these wires which are held in here by these little screws, usually flathead. Let me just loosen all of them up. And pull them off like that. And if you're gonna do this at your house and you're not really familiar with this, make sure you take a picture or label all the wires where they were at before you pull them off. Otherwise you might get confused or you might forget where they go when you try to put them back on. As you can see, there's a big wire that goes inside of my wall. And this wire runs through the wall and then all the way to my furnace or if you have an air handler, all the way to your air handler. So make sure you don't lose that wire inside of your wall. Whenever I take all these wires off, I like to just spread them out like this. That way if the wire kind of falls back into the hole, it stops it. Otherwise, if you lose the wire, well, tough luck. You have to try to fish it out or you have to cut out a little hole to try to catch that wire again. So we got those wires off. Now I'll go ahead and take the base off and I'll take it to the table and we can go over the basic wiring there. Okay, so what we have here is the thermostat, or more accurately, the base from the thermostat. We have a control board from the furnace, and we have a contactor from the air conditioner or from the condenser unit outside. And I just want to show you how to wire all these three up. Uh, basic wiring, this is not a heat pump. This is just a straight AC and a gas furnace. So let's start with the thermostat wire. I just want to go over the color coding, just so you know what they all are. So we have five wires here, and they will be labeled R, Y, G, W, and C. R, or the red wire, is gonna be your power, 24 volts in. Yellow is gonna be for cooling, the Y. G is fan, the blower fan in the furnace or air handler. W, or white, is the heating, and blue is the common. And just so you know, even though this is standard color coding, there are thermostats out there that don't go by this code. Somebody wired them up differently. For example, sometimes the yellow wire will be blue and I've seen the white wire be other colors and all of these wires sometimes are different color. So just because this is the standard color coding, that does not mean that your thermostat 100% will be this way as well. So it's always a good idea if you're replacing a thermostat to label all the wires which terminal they were connected to, or just take a picture of them before you pull all the wires out. So that's what those wires are. Next, we have the thermostat base, and the thermostat base is labeled as well. We got the R, the Y, the C, W, and G, and that's all we're gonna use. I do have a lot of other terminals that we're not gonna be using. This thermostat can be used for a heat pump. I don't have a heat pump, but if you do have a heat pump, you'd be wiring up the O or the B as well along with the AUGS, AUX, or the E-terminal for emergency heat. But we won't be touching that. Uh, my thermostat is basic, just straight AC, so we're only gonna be using the five terminals. And another thing I wanna point out is, right on the base, on my thermostat, it says right here, will not operate without wire to C. So this thermostat will not turn on without a common wire because it does not have any batteries. If your thermostat does have batteries, then it does not necessarily need a common wire. If it has the common wire, then the batteries just serve as a backup. So if the power goes out, the thermostat stays on. And one last thing I want to point out is that some thermostats will also have an RC or an RH terminal. And those stand for, you know, power to heating for RH. And for RC, that's power to cooling. Some thermostats are internally jumpered, but for many thermostats, you actually have to have as you can see this little jumper wire, you have to have this little jumper wire between R and RC to send power for cooling, 
otherwise your air conditioner will not turn on. So I do have a little jumper. If you replaced your thermostat recently and you don't have a jumper between R and RC, there's a good chance that the air conditioner will not turn on. So let's go ahead and wire this thermostat to the control board to see what that would look like. So I would put the red wire, the R, into either R or RC. It doesn't really matter which one I put it into because there's a jumper between R and RC. So I'll just go ahead and put it into R and tighten down the little set screw to make sure that's in there good. Next we'll put in the Y for cooling. We'll put in C for common, which is the blue wire. And like I said previously, common will not always be blue, even though that is the usual color. Sometimes it'll be brown or some other color. So we'll go ahead and put our common into the C terminal. We're gonna put our white wire into the W terminal and the green wire into G or the fan. Tighten that one up as well. Okay, so we have the thermostat hooked up. And then of course this wire goes into the wall and down to the furnace. And at the furnace, these same wires will go to the same terminals or the same letters as they do in the thermostat. I'll go ahead and hook them up real quick and show you. So I got the control board side hooked up. Same wires went to the same letters as on the thermostat. So you just stick them into each of these set screws and then tighten them down. So with this setup, we now have our furnace wired up. But as for the air conditioner, we need to add two more wires that go from the control board to the outside unit. So I got the thermostat and the board hooked up. And the very last thing is a two wire thermostat wire. Usually it'll be a brown color, but it can be white or some other color as well. A typical AC wiring setup will just have two wires going from the control board to the outside unit. And those two wires will go to Y and C on the control board. It does not matter which wire goes to which terminal, Y or C. Typically I like to do red for Y and then white for common, just because white is a commonly used color for the common or the neutral. So let's go ahead and hook this up to the control board as well. And here you go, I got the air conditioner hooked up as well. We got one wire at the Y, and we got the other wire hooked up to C. So now we have two wires at C, and two wires at Y. And then this thermostat wire that is hooked up to your control board and goes out to your air conditioner, this wire is usually a really long wire that goes out with your Freon pipes or the refrigerant pipes to the outside unit, to the condenser unit. And on the other end, most of the time, these two wires, the white and the red, do not go straight to the contactor. A lot of times they'll be wired into another wire via a wire nut like this, and then they go to the contactor. So for example, the way it would work in the summer is the thermostat would make a call for cooling. It would send a signal to the control board, and then the control board will send power out through these two wires to the contactor coil to power it up and pull the plunger in. In fact, let's go ahead and take this cover off, and I'll show you that plunger as well. So this is a two pole contactor, meaning it has two of these plungers instead of just the one like the classic style had. So the control board sends 24 volts to this little coil right here and that power sucks in this plunger and allows the 240 volts to go through. It does not matter which side which wire goes to. So once again there's a red and a white that are usually connected to another piece of wire. It does not matter which side goes where. And on a side note, if your contactor is not pulling in, that does not necessarily mean that your thermostat is bad. There's plenty of other reasons why a contactor plunger cannot pull in. In fact, I have a video where I go over 10 reasons why a contactor may not be pulling in. Well guys, and that is all I had for basic thermostat wiring. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time. And for those of you still here, let me share a quick super glue tip with you. I've heard this from plenty of repair guys, and just last week I heard this from another retired appliance repair tech, and he said he used to carry super glue in his tool bag all the time. 
just these little one-time use super glues. They come in like a pack of six. And he said whenever he would get like a little cut, he would clean it up and just put some super glue over it and that would heal it up real good. He said he even had big cuts, you know, the ones that are big enough to have some stitches on them that he was able to cure with super glue as well. So I've never actually done this myself, but like I said, I've heard this from plenty of people that do this. I looked it up online and apparently doctors say it's good as well. It used to be used for surgical purposes. So it is effective, it does work. And I'm kind of curious if any of you watching has done this before or know somebody that does this on a regular basis. It would be interesting to know about it. So please share with the rest of us in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.